Welcome back to Minecraft. Sorry, Melinka, I think I punched you as I started the episode. Hello. Hello, no worries. I've got a plasma cannon and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's scary. So, um, yeah, I wanted to show a couple of things. Uh, this, I've changed loads in this space, so I'm just going to go through and show like bits and bobs. So here is a, uh, a slime tree that I found out and about in the world on a slime island that's floating around. Unfortunately, because it came with a later update, it's actually really far out. You have to go find the new chunks before you can find these because of the way the updates work. But, you know, you break the leaves and hopefully you get another sapling. Oh, there's one. Oh, it's two. Nice. Um, if you break the these, uh, the trunks, I guess I could say of the trees, besides them making awful squelching noises, they've congealed green slimes which you can turn into slime balls. Well, we might as well get rid of the rest. Cool. Okay, and then I'll replant that one. And I'm going to put another one here, actually. So if we ever need to make sticky pistons, we've complained in the past about not having enough slimes, so when we need to make sticky pistons for our buses, we've got them there. You happy with that? Yep. Cool. Right, next. I got one slime ball. Unfortunately, I can't throw it at your head. Next with the changes are raft lamps. Um... Oh my god, I'm going to do raft lamp explanation, aren't I? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> okay, raft lamps, let's do it, because they're fun, actually. So let's go into the explanation of, of how raft lamps work. Um, raft igniter is made, uh, is required for all raft lamps. Um, and that requires a piece of never brick, which is easy, it's just never uh, rack cooked up. And then these diamond shards. Diamond shards are a bit harder, actually, and they're to do with these craft packets. Um, here we go. A craft packet. So we need to make a craft packet. So I'm going to do that now, I think. Obsidian, TNT, obsidian, TNT, block of diamond. Okay. So let's... I'm, I'll make one of these again. It's Because they're fun to do, so I don't mind. Um, obsidian, which we've got. I'll just put that in my inventory. Um, TNT, I think I put in the auto craft. Uh, do I need you did. more than six? Uh, I don't think so. And then a block of diamond. All right. Here's the scary part: is I have a lot of blocks of diamond. I got 191 blocks of diamond. That's freaking amazing. But you're running short on gunpowder, actually. You've got 60 left. Oh, yeah, that's not a problem. I don't need any more than what I'm using here. In fact, I don't even need this. So I'm only just... So I put the recipe in here like so. And you can't even look it up. It's kind of weird. But that makes you a craft packet. And I grab this craft packet. Right. And then here we've got a... I think it's craft packet stamper, which you should be able to look up easy enough. Um... Uh, Why is it not here? I'm surprised it's not in this. Oh, yeah, here we go. I think it's over. The, I think it's a stamper. I could be wrong, but just look up. It's a factorization mod anyway. You place it in in here, and it explodes and gives you diamond and explodes a block of diamond into diamond shards. Nice, interesting first step. Then, as we said, the raft igniter. Um, let me just get that ready. Hopefully I've still got never bricks in here, yeah. And you can make craft a raft igniter. Which is basically like a lighter to do this. We did this last season, I think. But I'm just going to show it again anyway. We did. Um, next, to make um, these raft lamps, you need something called dark iron ingots. And this is where we can have a little bit of fun. So I'm just going to grab some iron blocks. And I'll just do a few. Here we go. So now with our raft igniter, I'm outside the front linker. But yeah, with our raft igniter, I'm going to set it on fire. Ah, yes. <laughs> and I'll just wait. 
and it will start burning up. <clears throat> Last season, we used these to cook an entire building, which is fun. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> that was a complete tripod we set on fire. <laughs> And then we ran around like headless chicken to burn uh, to uh, take out all the fires around the building. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, then you get these these blocks, which is basically dark iron. Oops. Let me fix the holes. Keep one more tidy. behind you. All right, that's cool. Then you take the d block of dark iron and you put them in a crafting grid, and it turns into the ingots. So like that's how to make the component parts so now with that in mind I'll come over to here drop these extra dark iron ingots and I probably got another RAF igniter in there anyway that I was using but glasses for panes some silver ingots added to it and you get RAF lamps and RAF lamps we use these so much last season but yeah they just uh, they light up a huge amount uh, for now I'm just going to dump that there, it's not perfect but and I could get rid of like most of these torches because they won't be needed and it will just tidy up and I eventually I plan on going around this entire building and you know hiding these you know that doesn't work right? Around. they don't uh, you can see the wall here isn't lighting up I can't remember how they exactly worked again Oh, it doesn't matter. Like it's it's good enough for now. It's not too dark for, to prevent spawns. The floor is the one that's important. It has to not be lit up anyway, Linka, because that's where the monsters True spawn. Enough. Anyway, <clears throat> so that was the explanation of the raft lamps. Um, oh, by the way, the EU matter is going out of control. So I uh, used a storage bus here, set with EU matter everywhere. Uh, that wasn't necessary. I was just messing around. Um, I've set the storage priority here as minus one. Now that was necessary to make sure that this is the top priority. I think the lower the number, the higher the priority. It's kind of backwards. So anyway, I've got this set up here so that any UU matter that hits the system goes into this barrel. And because it's a storage bus, it still sees UU matter uh, in the recipe here. If I take it out here, it's actually taking it out of the barrel. So if you look here, that says 777 times 64 plus 55. Put it back and it says 778 because I took a, put a stack back. So yeah, that's that. Okay, that looks good there. Uh, let's go upstairs, shall we? Of course. God, I'm in a busy B in between episodes. Okay. Pun intended, I take it. Yeah, uh, and I'll, oh yeah, indeed. So it was with bees, and I am working <laughs> towards that nuclear bee. I did promise I am, and it's taking freaking forever. But uh, I'll, I'll show you in the index uh, at least that uh, I've got things like um, resi robust and resilient bees are around here somewhere. Um, and more importantly, in the never, I've been doing some work. There should be embittered bees and stuff like that somewhere. I'm just, do it by species. Yeah, I've got Infernal, Sinister, princesses, Sinisters. So I've been doing a bunch of stuff there. And if you look in the um, database here, you can see that, that here's Sinister, Fiendish, Modest, Hugo, Austere. That's one of the bees needed for nuclear bees. Um, and Rusty Bees. Although I've found Rusty Bees, every time I've tried to like get Pure Breed, it's got rid of the Rusty over several cycles, which is really annoying. I have to find it again. Which is what I'm doing in here by breeding resilient princess in the Meadows drone that needs Nova frames and Soul frames put back in. But don't worry about that. Anyway. God, so much stuff. I'm really sorry. But this is, uh, yeah, it's cool though. Uh, next, automation of bee houses. Okay, so here's an apiary here, which imperial drones. We've got our imperial queen uh, or princess as it was originally and our drones. You've seen us set those up before and if you uh, look underneath which is going to be tricky but you may have to take my word for it it's a basic um, import bus is underneath all of these don't forget you can fly oh yeah that is true um, yeah so underneath all of these are basic import buses which are, are touching the bottom of it, each of those okay 
Uh, on this side, there's fuzzy export buses. No, it should kind of be precision, but do you know what? The fuzzy's working right now, and the precision was being weird. So for now, the fuzzies are working. What it's doing is any Imperial Princess B, right, is being brought up into into here, and the same with any Imperial drone is being brought up and sucked into here. But no other type of B is. Um, so uh, if, say, for instance, we look at a diligent drone that's not being sucked up so I've got that set up on our fuzzy export bus here um, now the problem with this using fuzzies instead of precisions if there was uh, a crossbreed B inside the system where it was say imperial plus diligent it would also suck it up so um, and that would then ruin the pure breed line so to do that anything which is crossbreed is going into the indexer so as not to to dirty the B line with dirty B's you racist well <laughs> yes it's only the pure breeze. oh god I'm sounding like a Nazi holy <laughs> moly anyway I'm the Nazi of bee breeding um, <laughs> so it's, each of these have got set up with different things that I wanted um, even though we've got tropical in here, me and Malinka are safe because of our armor has got bee protection on them. So we're good with the tropical stuff. Um, one other thing is I've made a separate AE system so we didn't clog up our main AE system with bees. So yay. Uh, I'm going to take that melon out of the system because I want to show something to do with that later. But I'll come round to that. Okay, so now we've got all the bees coming in, and with the export, all the combs are coming in automatically, and they're landing in the system here. So let's deal with how we're doing with combs. So as people may remember, combs go into a centrifuge, which is this machine. And I've got a fuzzy export bus, and the fuzzy is really important here. So remember, the difference between fuzzy and, and precision is that fuzzy looks at more like data damage values and data values differently to the way... A precision is like, it's precisely this item and this item alone that goes in. A fuzzy one says, well, this item and anything similar to it. So let's take, for instance, um, a pickaxe. If I put in this pickaxe um, into a, a fuzzy export thing, then what it will do, uh, uh, sorry, in a precision export, then it will only export pickaxes with a damage value of 58. You can see on my screen here, 14307 colon 58, which means it, someone would have had to have got pickaxe with exactly that dura amount of durability left, exactly those data values, and then it will export. Now, if I put a fuzzy export in and put this pickaxe in there, it would export any pickaxe that is, you know, a formium pickaxe, basically, or whatever, manulian pickaxe, whatever this one is. Um, it would just dump them all out. So that's the difference. Is like one looks at like precisely it has to be this, and one says mm, it can be like this. So in this case with combs, in a fuzzy, it's like anything which is like a comb gets brought in. And uh, propolis is different actually uh, because of it's actually been programmed smartly. So only silky propolis comes in and not the other propolis because I don't think other propolis don't need to be centrifuged. Well, well, I think the ones that can be centrifuged will come in. The ones that can't, don't. But yeah, they've actually developed it to be smart. So anyway, any combs go into the centrifuge. Even though I've only got stringy combs here, any comb will do it. So that's good because now any comb that hits the system gets automatically processed and dropped in here, which is fantastic. Look. Um, Quick question though. The yeah. Robust drone in there is a hybrid. Do you want it in there? Uh, the robust. Uh, you can get rid of that. Yeah, not. I'm not exporting any robust drones anyway. But you can get rid of, rid of it. I think I. It's an indexer. Doing something weird. Uh, can we sleep, please? Just here. There we go. Two reasons. One, it's raining. And that should stop the rain. And two, um, I'd like to, the bees are now in action, as you can see, because it's now daytime. There we go, and the rain stopped. Cool. 
Okay, so we've discussed that. So now, um, with the combs that come through, you sometimes get honey drops. Honey drops, they need, to, as we've again we've discussed before, they need to be squeezed in to make honey. So here I've got another fuzzy export bus looking for honey drops. And any honey drops that come in get dropped in the squeezer, and that's good. And anything else gets basically exported out, um, which in this case is propolis. Because when you squeeze honey, you, I think you sometimes get propolis. Or some other stuff even. Depends on the honey maybe. Yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, but there are some items that sometimes appear. So I've got that basic exporting out. However, I actually use honey drops in my beer -lizer, So I don't want... I know there's an automatic analyzer, but the beer uh, the, this beer -lizer is faster. So when I'm sitting doing lots of bee things, I tend to use that more than the actual automatic analyzer. So I don't want to use up all my honey drops. I want to keep a store so I can use them. So here I've got a level emitter again. We've used these before. Set to 65 honey drops or below will emit a redstone signal that will turn the export bus off, which is that's only active with a signal. So it will stop. It will stop uh, exporting these honey drops if there's less than six, uh, 65 in there. So that's why in the system over here there are 64 honey drops. You with me so far? <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay, good. Hopefully the audience is too. Uh, obviously honey then gets squeezed and sent out. And instead of in cans this time, it's going into this tank. Yay, yummy honey. You know, we could um, export these honeys into a fermenter from um, uh, Build Crafts, I believe it's from. No, Forestry. And we could have mead. We could be sitting drinking mead if you really wanted to. I might do that in the future. Hmm, alcohol. Or we wait till the tank is full and take a dip. We start swimming in honey. Uh, indeed, that sounds sticky. <laughs> 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 All right, next thing to show. Uh, you've actually come around here with, with normal seeds uh, and filled this up, which is fine. He brought them over from his farm because he had tons of them. Um, and so that's currently what we're using to bring seed oil in. He's just grabbed the seeds, put them in the export bus, and any seeds that he manually at the moment is coming in, putting in the system, is which he's got like 504. God, you put a lot in here. But anyway. It's so half an inventory. <laughs> it's a non-automated way, actually, because he's actually carrying them from his base to mine. So a non-automated way of getting seed oil is that. However, this system is also, also capable of automated seed oil. And my choice of seed oil production at the moment, because it's I'm kind of restricted because I haven't gone deeper into other parts of the mod. But at the moment, I'm choosing to go with melons. Now, melons um, has a three-step process to it. So one, you have to grow the melons. Number two, you have to break the melons. And that gives you slices of melons. And then third step is you have to turn the melons into melon seeds which then you can squeeze. So basically you're looking at a three step process. So, first step of that process, as I just said, is grow your melons. Let's go around here, careful Malinka, as he broke this earlier. <laughs> um, round here is- I'm a violent maniac. I'm growing melons at the back of the base, just here, this is fine. And when it grows, it sprouts to the only available spot which is right in front of it. So step two, as I said, was break the melons. Turning round, here is something called a transition plane. Transition planes is from Applied Energistics and effectively they're a smart block breaker. So what it does is it breaks the melons in front of them whenever they appear and, um, and then automatically suck them into the applied energistic system and stores the melons or, uh, or the slices of melons because it's broken them in the computer. So good, there's two steps of our three step process. We've got the growing and the breaking of said melon. Third step of it is to craft the melon slices to turn them into melon seeds. Now, this is a separate AE system which means I can't do auto-crafting here. I have to go auto-crafting downstairs. 
But I didn't want to do that. That was just like, oh my god, I don't want to hook up all the systems. It's a pain. So how else can you do auto crafting? Well, thermal expansion to the rescue. This, oh, if I don't mess it up, is a cyclic assembler. So first of all, with a cyclic assembler, you need to put a schematic um, in here. So there's a way of doing schematics. It's uh, of crafting them. It, I think it's lapis and three pieces of paper makes you a schematic. And then you have to teach the schematic what to do. So you can put the recipe in here and then tick and it will apply its schematic uh, to the piece of paper. So that's how you set up a schematic. You then put the schematic in the assembler itself. Next you need to do is, uh, Cycle Assembler is even more clever than that because you can actually um, import liquids into it for crafting stuff, but I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment. Uh, for this, all we're doing is melons. So if you put melon in a blue slot, which is one of these, which is an item slot, it will get processed using the schematic in the, and get output of the orange slot. So in this case, a melon put in here, gets turned into a melon seeds and gets exported out. Fairly simple. And using an interface, I'm telling them that's how you craft it. So, you know, you craft one melon, uh, one melon gets turned into one melon seed in the interface stuff. And then each of those are being, you know, that's a basic export here and the interface is importing it in as a crafting recipe. And again, we've been showing a lot of this in other machines anyway, right? So we're good there. Uh, now over to the squeezer, the seed oil. So um, just going to show one thing here is that I've got here in stack mode, it moves single items slash craft and that selection is important because I don't think it defaults to that. So you have to change it to slash craft is important. Is there. So what it's saying here is I need melon seeds and if I don't have any melon seeds, I should craft them. And then it, you know, so working backwards, it will craft it from here because it knows with the schematic that oh, this is how I craft them, and then that will look in here and says, do I have any melons? And here it says, yes, I do. So you can see the reason why the melon isn't being crafted right now into melon seeds is because it's not being requested, because this is too full of seeds, so therefore it's not requesting melon seeds. So for now, it will just store the melons straight until it runs out of the seeds that Melinga brought over. Right. Wow. Explanation. Good That's so a lot of talking. It is. <laughs> so then, I just haven't finished yet. So the squeezer is squeezing out the uh, seed oil, which is going into this orange, orange, orange ender tank which is being stored through here. There's the other orange, 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 and gets pumped into this tank here for storage to be used later. And that is everything that more or less we've done so far. And then what I was going to record this episode, which I'm running out of time for, so I'm going to have to do it next episode, is these machines. This is next episode. <laughs> so next episode, I'm going to show you how these special extra bees um, machines work. I've laid them all out. Uh, this isn't in their final positions. I just wanted to lay them out to show you what they do. And join us next time when you'll find out how. So for me and Malinka in this extremely <laughs> explanation heavy episode that went on way too long. Thank you for joining us. If you like the setups and everything, <laughs> let us know. Um, we've got we're starting a new series soon. I know we talked about a couple of episodes back. I'm just going to cover this really fast. Um, I believe in maybe like two or three weeks is when the new series starts. So I'm just going to finish off some little bits here. And then we're going to switch over to new season. And the new season, we're going to do far less of the beginning stuff on camera. So you've seen oh, us yeah. set all of this stuff up before for most of it. And so what we'll do is we'll speed through the beginning. Is that we'll give you like quick snapshots in on the camera break. So, you know, we'll, we'll say, here we are in the world. Here's us punching a tree. Then cut. Here's us mining. Cut. Here's us <laughs> finding our first diamond. Cut. Here's us with like all of this great um, Tinkerer's Construct stuff set up. All the basic of that. Cut. cut. Here's Fire Lash being attacked by five creepers. 
Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be more like that, just because we really want to speed along. So, for instance, our first episode will be very content heavy, trying to get through the basics of the basics mods in as fast a way as possible. And I'm hoping that by episode five or six, um, that we're actually starting to work on like proper machinery and you know automation of proper stuff as opposed to the basic setup of mods so yeah if you've been worried about you know us starting again and it just being the same explanations over again not next season next season anything that we've shown you before is going to be really fastly breezed over but you'll see the base kind of extend we still want that progression being seen but we don't necessarily have to explain everything anymore anyway on that note of explaining everything ever, I'm going to shut up now and let you <laughs> let you enjoy some other video somewhere, I guess. Uh, but thanks for joining us, me and Malinka. I didn't even get a word in. <laughs> I know, I'm really sorry. Next episode, Malinka, please. Oh. Yep. Next, next episode, I'm going to be asking the stupid questions because I actually don't know a lot about this mod. <laughs> no worries. See you next time, folks. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye.